But yes, they did air the footage, Jack Perry and CM Punk on the show. And, uh, you know, they had talked about how the footage was going to air. And Tony had said that, you know, in some way, shape or form, this is going to play into the Dynasty pay-per-view. And they, they, uh, they did. They did try to. They did try. Yeah, I remember thinking, how in the world are you going to turn this into a storyline? And this is what they did. The Young Bucks explained that on that show, this incident occurred, and they were so busy dealing with it as EVPs that they could not put on their pro wrestler hats, and they went out there with a lot on their minds, and they lost to FTR. That was the story that they weaved out of this. And uh, that is what is going to be playing into the Dynasty match with FTR. And FTR cut a promo as well, and away we go to the pay-per-view. But um, what did you think of this I, video and airing it here on this program? I did not think it was a good idea. I mean, I didn't think I never did think it was a good idea. But after, but I thought, look, look, you got to give him benefit of the doubt, see what happens. It's like, here, here's the thing. Later in the show, when the fans were chanting CM Punk, it was like, well, this one sure backfired because that's the, that's the, I mean, I didn't, you know, you don't want people chanting the name of someone from another promotion during your show. And sometimes it's going to happen and you just can't avoid it. But this one was one that you brought on yourself. And, uh, you know, it just reminded me of like, when fans did the We Want Flair stuff in 91, and that was not a good thing. Um, yeah, I just, I, I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't see how it helped at all. I mean, whether the rating is good or bad, it just it didn't, it didn't come across well. And uh, the footage was, you know, I mean, there really wasn't much to the footage. Um, you know, he went in there. Obviously, they had some words. Actually, I thought there was a lot to the footage. Well, we can talk about this. Well, this, this, this is how I looked at it. They were there long enough exchanging words with all those people around that somebody should have jumped in before anything happened. So then Punk shoves him. He tries to grab the guill guillotine. It's broken up immediately. Okay? And, and that's pretty much it, you know, as far as that goes. Um... The problem is, and even though, as you and I, as you talked to me about this a couple days ago, um, the incident with Tony was not going to be shown, and it wasn't shown. But now, what's happened is, is that people are going like, Tony said he threatened my life. Where's the footage? You know, and it's just like, it just, you know, I mean, he did say that, and by showing the footage and having nothing of that, it just uh, made, you know, it just wasn't well thought out. It was. You know, I mean, I, I suppose you could have shown that that footage, too, but that doesn't even play into storyline at all. But the storyline, like like they try to weave a storyline out of it to make the Young Bucks into heels and FTR into baby faces. And I thought I will say this. I thought FTR did as good a job as they could have done on the promo, given the circumstances that were there. But um and they, you know, they could have told they could have told the same story without showing the footage. The footage just didn't do anyone any favors. That's what I thought. So, well, this is what I'm going to say about the footage. So, first off, there was no sound, and so we don't yes. know what CM Punk said to Jack Perry. We don't know what Jack Perry said to CM. Punk. I could sort of see the Jack Perry stuff, but I couldn't see the CM Punk because his back was to the camera. Yeah, so they're they're all backstage. I mean, there there there, there was there was definitely a uh, you know what are you going to do about it? I mean, I could see that from his mouth. And, you know, Punk has said that, and I'd heard, and we'd heard that from day one, you know, when he came in and Punk started saying stuff, and it was like, what are you going to do about it? Which is not, you know, whatever. It, it's it's not an excuse to shove, you know, shove someone and try to attack him, you know, which he did, but. You know, well, let's uh, let's go over what happened. So they're, they're backstage, and Samoa Joe is there. He's kind of pacing. He's getting ready for his match. And Jack is there, and. He's he's kind of facing towards where the security camera is, and you see CM Punk walk up to him, and you only see Punk from behind. And he walks up and he starts talking to Jack, and you can see that there's uh you know there's people, some of them are kind of going about their business. Joe is like totally ignoring the situation. He's just he's still pacing and getting ready, but you can see like a couple of people they stop and they're looking like. What the hell's going on here? So they're talking back and forth, and, you know, Jungle Boy first has his hands on his hips, and then he's kind of messing with his hair or whatever. 
but there's no like aggressive movement towards CM Punk or anything. He's sitting no, no, there and he's, he's listening to CM Punk. And uh, and finally, you know, whatever it was that, that Jack said, Punk shoves him with his right hand. He shoves him with two hands. Jack kind of goes towards him. Punk grabs and then, you know, literally from the first shove to them being pulled apart was less than six seconds. Yeah. And the amount of time that Jack was actually in whatever it was, was four seconds. And, you know, whatever happened with the choke, we still couldn't see anything. I yeah. mean, Punk's story is he choked him, and Jack's story is he just had a hold of my head, and there was there was nothing there. But it was like, boom, it was over. But it was over and quick. Now, the one thing we can say that, uh, that CM Punk uh, was not truthful about was he said that I choked him a little bit. Joe came up and asked me to let go. I said, okay. That is that did, not that what did, happened. That did not happen. That did no, not happen. Joe rushed up and he he, he pulled them off, pulled those dudes apart, and then um, and then uh, Jerry Lynn was there and he dragged uh, Jack. Well, away. There, there's or, more no, before he, that he, even happened. He jacked he jacked punk he dragged punk away. So so as they're having their four second skirmish, Punk's ass bumps into the monitors and the monitors kind of start to wobble, and and you can see that the people on the other side of the monitors, so you really can't see. They're trying to fix the monitors, and there's a hand that comes over the monitor. I'm pretty sure it's Tony Khan. And then from behind the monitors, out comes Chris Hero. And uh, Chris Hero and Jerry Lynn help break the entire thing up. And after they're pulled apart, I mean, CM Punk does go right towards the other side of those monitors where uh, where Tony Khan was at. And uh, Chris Hero got between them very, very quickly. And then uh, Hero and Jerry Lynn, you know, they uh, they talk to Punk. Punk storms off, and uh, he's followed by Malachi Black. And then you can see, um, and man, Chris Hero, two hands on his face. He's like, oh, my God, and he walks out of there. And then you can also see um, Sanjay Dutt heads over to talk San, to... Sanjay Dutt uh, Jut ran in there, yeah. yeah to Jack so. Perry. And uh, you could actually also see uh, Chris Harrington, who uh, he is kind of, you know, in the foreground of, of the camera. And when Punk and, and Jack really start, you know, going at it verbally, I mean, you see Harrington, he's like pointing, going like, dude, something's going on over there. And, uh, and he's probably the first one that realized that shit was about to go down. So anyway, that was the, uh, that was the footage. That was everything we saw. And so, uh, you know, we still have, you know, some questions answered, uh, unanswered. Uh, what did everybody say? We have no audio, so we don't know. And uh, we do know two things, however. We know two things. One, Punk was absolutely the physical aggressor, which was oh, why yeah. when uh, people watched the footage, they decided that he should be fired. Uh, and then the two other things, which, which people talked a lot about, are number one, what was Tony talking about in fear of his life, which, yep. you know, it's been everywhere. And the other thing is, if you watch the footage... You know, regardless of whatever Jack Perry said to CM Punk, that guy's been suspended now for seven months. Mm -hmm. And when you watch that footage, well, 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 well he's, he's it's not like he's not suspended. He's not suspended. He's not back. Well, he's gonna be back. He's gonna be back imminently. He and was he, suspended for a long time. But I mean, he, he has he, not been used in seven months. He has not been used in seven as months. a result of this footage, which is ridiculous. It is, and that's part of the thing. It's part of the thing I was asking about. Like, Matt Jackson is doing the promo. He's supposed to be a heel. He's wearing a scapegoat shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, they show the footage, and, and all you can think as a viewer is, yeah, guy's kind of a scapegoat here. Like, I mean, you know, what did he do? He must have said something, but well, then the guy it, went it, after it, him. It was it was it was what he did on t It was what he did on the air. It's not what he did backstage. It's Seven like, months. Well, he was back in January because he was back in the San Jose show for New Japan, so he wasn't. Yeah, he was back for New Japan, but he has not been on AWT. No, he's not been seven on TV. months as a well, result of this. He's coming back now. This was the angle to bring him back. So, um, you know, that's he'll, you know, I don't know exactly what week he'll be back. Probably before the, either at the pay -per -view actually, I presume he comes back at the pay per view and helps the Bucks win. That's I what presume, I got out of this. I, that's what I presume too. But we'll wait, we'll wait and see. I mean. They may not do it because it, it's so predictable, but maybe they'll just do it because it's the way to do it to follow it up. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's how I read it from listening to the thing. It was interesting when the Young Bucks were doing the promo 
they made that comment about um, somebody saying that, like, if, if you have a problem with Jack Perry, the problem is you. And, of course, you know, so that was a that was a nice dig because that was CM Punk who said that. Um, but it's but and I, I guess the whole thing I have that's the big problem is, is that or the whatever my thought is, is like you need to get past this. You know what I mean? It's like it's just it does nobody any good. Like I heard from people this week, a couple people, you know, like when when Punk did his interview. OK, like, you know, I asked around and the basic thing was, is like, look, it's over and done with, it was, you know, bad chapter in the history of AEW and it's over and no point and he can say whatever he wants you know who cares there were a couple of people who were you know going like you know yeah you know like you know adam page never got to answer back and won't and will never answer back because he doesn't want to be you know whatever he doesn't you know but or it's kind of hard to you know whatever but most people are just like we're over it it's not part of our lives. It's not part of our company. Forget about it. Now here, as soon as Tony did that, then I started hearing from people, and it was people who were just like really frustrated, going like, "Now it's back. You know, the whole thing is back, and you know, there's, you know, things that have happened, and and you know, people have been made to look bad now, and and they can't answer back, and it's just, you know, because you don't want to, you know." It's it's it opened up a wound that needed to be closed. They need to move past this. This doesn't do AEW any good. I mean, if I'm punk, I'm laughing about it. Honestly, I'm laughing about it. It's like, well, let me let me say more. So they, uh, well, first, you know, there's a lot to say on this show. I mean, we should probably just mm-hmm. review the show first. But we have other news, but I will well, say yeah, regarding about, this. At some point, yeah. Regarding this. Man, there were people in this show. I, I guess I don't want to call out people's names, but if you look on Twitter, it's like there were people that were just like so depressed to have to be involved in this, throw to this, you know, ask questions. But, but anyway, they first go to the Bucks and they tell their side of the story. And you know, by the this- way, when they when they went there, I just want to mention when they went there again. And I could be misreading this, and I don't want to because I got no, nothing negative about you know, like uh, I get along with Tony, you know, but. When, That's Tony why Schiff- I wasn't about, bringing it up. I'm talking about Tony Schiavone, not Tony Khan. That's why uh, I wasn't going to bring it up, but now but, you have. Well, because it was right there on the screen. Right I when they're gonna, know. He looked right absolutely when right, miserable. When, right when they're going there, there's this look on his face, and I'm going, like, when I watch it, it's like, Tony's Tony's been in this business for 40-plus years, 41 years, 42 years. And I saw that look on his face, and it's like, oh, this isn't going to be good. You know, and yeah, that's how I read it. And he may go and say like this had nothing to do with it, and and all that. And if and I'm sorry, but I just saw that look on his face, and it like it was like I'm I don't know about this if he's looking like this. So they do the whole thing with the young bucks, and then uh, they show the footage, and then they come back to the young bucks again, and uh, they cut their promo saying, you know, the worst that what we just saw they said was bad, but the worst part was we were creating a wrestling show, naming a wrestling show, filling the, filling the building with all the most people who'd ever witnessed a wrestling show, only to be distracted by something so stupid, and we lost on our big night. And FTR, we're going to beat you at Dynasty, and we will not be shaking your hands afterwards. So the thing's over, and I'm like, okay. Well, they, 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 the one thing, too, is, is like, Nick did the thing where they, which, you know, obviously this is an angle of trying to say that FTR may have planned this whole thing, you know, to throw us off our game. And then Matt was almost like, uh, what was it, like trying to downplay it, but like it's out there. I don't know. I mean, I got nothing against that. I'm just saying, because the whole, I I wouldn't have minded um, an angle and all this, but I just felt that involving Punk and showing the footage, while it will probably... We don't know for sure, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it helped the rating. But it's not, you know, it's one week rating, and 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 if it makes the company look bad in the long run, um, what's the one week rating worth? Worth? And it may not even get that. Maybe it will. Uh, maybe the quarter will get it, and people will turn it off. We'll find out tomorrow. I don't know. But all right. Well, let me let me get back to the point. So they uh, they finish off this deal, and I'm sitting there thinking, all right, you did it. It's over. Well, let's just move the fuck on now. And so then they bring out FTR. Now, I thought that what FTR said, like they were they were doing their best to try to, to I, I thought, play I their they, characters. I thought but they you were know doing what, Dave? Here's a problem. Here's a problem. Yes. Everything they said 
is everything that is a fan we're thinking like yeah. can we just move on from this i'm sick of hearing about it i'm sick of having to deal with it like they're doing this promo and it's like yeah can we move on and i'm not thinking that is like a viewer in storyline i'm thinking that is a real viewer like can we just move on and get back to just having a dynamite show and so they do this whole thing everything's fine whatever and then the very next segment they interview will osprey and will osprey has to start talking about triple h and he doesn't mention him by name no. but he references when triple h was talking about people didn't want to do the grind and he's got to do this whole promo about you're only there because you were grinding on the boss's daughter and he's doing this and that and at this point i'm like i've spent 20 minutes listening to tony khan have guys get revenge on wwe can we just move on now hopefully but, this is it hopefully well, we have moved on well, and we we'll can see. just like do a show now because i mean i don't know i i, I will say this okay um what will osprey did was something that in the 90s everyone would have done because that's how it was, and even in the even even in the late, it's 80s, not the '90s, and people are I know sick it. of it now. Okay, but the point the point is is like, I would not have done it. I'm just saying that like, that's that's exactly what happened in the rest. That's what happens in wrestling wars, and you don't want to be a punching bag. At the same time, this was not the week for it. I just didn't. Feel, I know it's the week that 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 Levesque said it, but I just felt that there's. It's it's not you got to read the room, and reading the room is is like it's not the time to say it now. If there was a media interview, and Will Osprey thought that, I would have no problem. This is with him exactly what we talked about with the footage. I, I would have. If no you problem. wanted to get the footage out, you could have sent it to the media. You yeah, didn't the, need to do it on your television. But the footage. If you if the footage wasn't even beneficial to anyone. I know, but I'm telling you, Dave, it's the same thing. If you wanted the footage out, you could have sent it to the media. You didn't need to put it on Dynamite. Agreed. And it's the same thing with the Will Osprey promo. It didn't need to be on Dynamite. And I think that like. At, at well, the end of the this, day, not not th not this week, not this week, but at the same time, um, you know, gr granted, you know, they did it in a pretty public place. I mean, it was on television. It wasn't like it was some social media thing. That was like a major interview on a television show. And if if you want to react, you can react to that. I would not have done it on this television show this week. For there's a lot of different reasons why the timing. Even though it's the we, the first show that they've had since then. What major television show are you talking about? Pat McAfee show. It's a pretty highly rated show. I know, but it's not like on Raw, SmackDown, or it's on, NXT. It's, it's, it's on the Pat McAfee show. It's still well. On let television. him let him go on another show then. Let him go on 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 some other oh, television show, but oh, not I the actual wrestling show. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. But I saw again. I mean, all of the stuff as far as in wrestling wars before, this stuff has always been done. It's not like it's like that's like, yeah. And there's a lot of things in wrestling wars that backfire. Usually, all those, the time. Those did, many times they didn't backfire. I mean, look at I mean again, look at all the stuff. This is child's play compared to the stuff Vince did. And I'm not defending it. I'm just saying that like Dusty Rhodes and you know Ric Flair used to go on and you know, well, that's all other... fine and good. But it sounds and, like a defense and, here. It didn't no, need to be on television. I, 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 well, not this week because this was a bad week to put it on. But at some point, you know, you, you can't be a punching bag either. I mean, granted, I mean, you can't. You've got it because if you're a punching bag, then that doesn't do you any good. But this was not the week. This you can the... also ignore it and concentrate on your own product, you which absolutely... I think is what AEW needs to do. I will agree with you. I do think they need to concentrate on their own product and ignore it. However, at some point, you also have to, you also can't be a punching bag. But this is not the time to be punching back. This is just the timing isn't right. You have to under if, if it was a different point, it would have been fine. But this was not the week for it. So I mean, again, you could have done it in in uh, you could have done it in in an interview. You could have done it on a podcast. Um, I think it probably would have been more effective doing it on a podcast because again, you don't. I don't think that it was a good idea to do this on your television show. Ha having said that, Will Osprey got a great reaction. So, um, but I was not. I was not a fan of it. 
Um, I know a lot of people who are not fans of it. I would I was not a fan of the timing of it at all. But as far as the idea of answering back or, you know, ignoring it, you know, sometimes, you know, he did go he did go out. I guess he went after Will. I wasn't even sure it was Will. But I mean, I everyone seemed to think that. And he, he's got the right to, you know, look, the guy, the guy works his ass off and he didn't deserve that. You know, he didn't deserve that from Levesque. I mean, and uh, again, it, it I don't think it was the place for it, but I do think the answering back was was something that he, if he wanted to do it, if Tony wanted him to do it and put it on TV, which very well could have been the thing. It's like, honestly, I think someone should have told Tony, well, I know, I don't want to get into this, but I think somebody should have told Tony that this is not the week. Give it a week. Think it out. Um, but it happened. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that that's a game changer. I don't think that's anything that's going to be like a week from now. It's not going to matter in any way, shape, or form. I don't think people are going to start booing Will Osprey. If they do, if they start booing Will Osprey over this, then then backfired. I didn't get that from the crowd at all. That that was what's going to happen. But yeah. I shouldn't have been on this show this week. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.